what I wanted to, to uh, pay attention for you that working capital, that's the only tool you can have to generate cash. Because after operating profit, what do you have? Like you have CAPEX, you have taxes. Like the only thing that investors are looking for is to generate cash. And that's the items you can impact. And you know that the interest rates are going very, very high. It will never go back to zero, no matter what a geopolitical situation is. Unfortunately, it's going to raise. And cost of working capital and borrowing cost doesn't cost at doesn't cost the same as operating profit cost, like when you borrow it. Uh, and we're talking about millions, we're not talking about 100K. Uh, so that's uh, the limitation we have, and uh, we need to continue to work on that. And it is purely operational thing. I'm a part of fp &A team, although I challenge operations. Why? I cannot be part of operational team because I'm challenging, I'm, uh, I'm uh, driving the projects all over um, uh, the regions. But uh, generally speaking, you, you take some projects, uh, you can't make it uh, the same way for all the regions because in Latin America you have one contract payment terms, in uh, North America, you have completely different one. There is no global policy for us, and I think for all the big companies, especially in pharmaceutical industry, so you need to provide some tailor-made made solution. And unfortunately, the, the, the only way is to find the projects where we are good and to, to make it like very, very tailor-made. Um, how do we do that? Uh, we have a lot of acquisition. The complexity uh, itself uh, as well that we have a lot of ERP systems because we buy from four to six companies per year. That's a lot. And we are focusing on our BDA, we are focusing on our sales, but uh, we have to maintain the cash to, to be able to buy more and more companies. And sometimes in certain regions, the companies are competitors to each other. That's ridiculous, but that's how it is. So then uh, we, do, we do have three uh, targets for bonus, and it is related to leadership of every zone and, of course, to our CEO. And one of the targets is working capital. That's the way you can keep focus on that. And then you have incentive programs, which is individual targets, which is monetized targets. Then it helps to spread they, they keep eyes on working capital. And then I said, of course, that's uh, we always talk about product availability, payables, receivables, being loyal to our suppliers, being loyal to our customers, so ever, but my job is to generate cash, so I'm gonna go further. Um, I'm not gonna um, focus on the opportunities because it's very uh, operational scene. Um, I'm going to try to explain you what other drivers can be to analyze forecast and uh, to budget working capital. And I'm going to explain how do I align those targets uh, for you to, to think about it if you can implement or for your future you have ambitions to become a CFO, which probably some of you have then you need to think about working capital as well because that that would be your, uh, at one point, uh, that will be your role to, to balance it. So then I'm gonna focus on the first two because we don't have much time left, unfortunately. But then uh, I'm gonna first speak about uh, how do you work with database. So when you start to budget or to forecast working capital, you need to I think for a BDA as well, you need to, ex to exclude everything which is one-off. Everything what happened to you last year, the year before, which was one-off, and it will never repeat again. So this is the guarantee. No matter if you will hire someone uh, from the banking service like it was presented today, like supply chain financing or procurement uh, database benchmarking, uh, no matter what you're gonna do, or you're gonna do it yourself, like you're gonna have a working capital manager in your future team, doesn't matter, you need to have a good database. Because if you hire someone and spend a lot of money, 
you need to make sure that your database is, uh, is correct, you have all payment terms and uh, all the data. And then you need to set assumptions, but very particular assumptions, like I beg you not to uh, set up something like percentage of overdue decrease. It doesn't make sense at all, because when you're going to analyze your actual results versus your budget versus forecast, you're not going to find the reason. So you need to focus on top suppliers, on procurement, and you need to focus on specific buckets or specific clients, you need to filter the data to give some assumptions. Otherwise, it's just very, very generic, and uh, uh, it will not make sense for you to analyze that. You can draw the picture uh, for budget, for forecasting finance, but without operational drivers, uh, it's just you're not going to make it. Uh, if you think about this um, working capital, uh, if you don't do operational projects, if you don't do any... Uh, uh, efficiency in your company, uh, the working capital will only differ from months to months by your P&L spend and by your sales. There will be nothing else. So if you don't do any officially collection focus, if you don't do payment terms, if you don't do stock optimization, that will only differ by your spend. And that's what happens in most of the companies. You draw your DSO, DPO, DIO, that's a KPI, but that's not the driver. That's a reporting KPI that doesn't make sense, especially when you calculate it by 12 months average. That doesn't show anything. You will not be able to catch the moment when you make a decision. So when you talk about receivables, please talk about contract payment terms. Please don't talk about DSO or refer your DSO to a specific uh, uh, operational cycle of your industry. I'm going to explain you why. Because uh, at the left side, you have uh, this sales understanding, which probably most of the company have, is average 12 months. When in nominator, you have trade receivables, and in denominator, you have average sales of the year. That's what it is. You're not going to be able to, take, to be able to take any decision or analyze the, the, the seasonality here. Because uh, there is no s seasonal fluctuation. Uh, what you have to link link to it is to operational cycle of the company. What do I mean? Uh, for example, you are in a mayor region, and for example, your ev uh, average, or weighted average contract payment term is 30 days. That's how you pay, or how the, how the clients pay you, for example, the pharmacy or the hospital. They pay, the contract is 30 days, plus minus two weeks of the overdue, which is a healthy overdue. So what you have to do is to take trade receivables and divide by two months of your sales. Then you will understand the fluctuation, and then you will see. And when, when, the, uh, when you will calculate or your future direct reports will calculate your uh, working capital. You will see where they have the plugs uh, versus the last years. Uh, if you do step number one, which is eliminating one off, and then if you do step number two, which you, you link your operational capacity, it doesn't matter. It's the, the example is DSO, but it can be the DIO, DPO, wherever. It's just uh, an example. Then you will see and you're able to analyze the ratios and never never analyze the ratio in values as well because it again doesn't make sense only in ratio because you need to balance on on the spend on the on the sales and or on your balance sheet because if you analyze uh, in even in organic values again it will not bring you anywhere unfortunately because the, 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 the company change, industry change, inflation, all the factors like volumes, it, it's just impossible to analyze that. Uh, later on, you have an impact. And then uh, uh, for collections, for example, it is very important to have an incentive program. Or if you cannot afford an uh, incentive program in commercial department or credit control or account receivables, at least do a nice scorecard. And the scorecard, uh, when you're doing a scorecard, never take only results. Take the processes as well. And then take it by region and make, make it weighted average. And then monitor it, but never again do it in a value. Always do it in percentage of improvement versus the start or versus the last months. And then you will see, it will not probably help you in the very beginning, but you will see where is better what, where is the best process or where is the best result. And then you can go there and implement the project for working capital or on collection. <laughs> 